Dash for the pound key is the newest operator to be introduced into Excel. This particular operator allows you to work with the dynamic array ranges within Excel 365. In this video, let me explain what is the hash operator, when you should be using and two practical advanced tips on working with hash operator within Excel. Let's go. In this file, I have some employee data from our awesome chocolates company and I would like to figure out which of our staff are making salary below $70,000. I would like to print all those salaries here and then calculate some totals. One of my close friends told me about the filter function which can filter out values based on conditions like this. So I write filter my staff table salary column where staff table salary column is less than the input cell value. And we do get the values that are returned by this formula. Because the filter formula has multiple values as a result, Excel will take all these values and then print them down on the screen. This behavior is called spilling. And this entire blue box where the filter formula output is returned is called spill range. One way to think about this spill range is like an iceberg. Just as the iceberg, we can only see the tip of the iceberg, the formula always goes into the corner cell. Depending on how many values are there, the spill range can go down or to the right as well. In this case, we are only dealing with one column, so the values go down. But if you change this and put staff instead of sa staff salary, then you have a spill range that is going down as well as sideways. This is the reason why I call my spill ranges Spillbergs. <laughs> Obviously, a lame pun on Spillberg and Iceberg. When you have a spill range that starts from a cell, in this case C13, we can use the special spill operator to deal with it. So I'm going to use the spill operator to answer these three questions. How many people are there whose salary is below 70,000? This is nothing but the count of values returned by the filter function. So we can say count and then C13. This is my cell where the formula is written. And I want to deal with all the values returned by the formula. So I'll use the hash operator. This is the spill operator. And when you close, you will see that there are 11 people. Let's find out their total salary. So sum of C13, you can type the hash or the pound operator yourself, or you can select the range. As you go to the very last point, Excel automatically changes this to C13 hash, and you will get the total salary. Let's do the average as well. The beauty of spill operator is it is all dynamic. So if your condition changes or if your range changes, automatically everything will change. So if I put this value up to 80,000, I will be able to see how many people have less than 80,000 as a salary, what is their total salary and how much is the average of those people. Understanding the importance of spill operator is really important to get more out of the dynamic array functionality of Excel. So let's demonstrate this with two more examples. For this next part of the tutorial, let's build a department report so that I can show one of the departments all their staff and then calculate what is their count and average. Along way, you will be able to learn some tricks about using the spill operator. The first one is I would like to pick a department instead of typing. So right now I am typing the department name and if I make a spelling mistake, let's say I type my HR department as HR and we'll get an error here because we don't have a HR department. We have a human resources as the department value. So my filter functionality wouldn't work when it is trying to filter department is equal to HR. So instead of letting these kind of errors happen, I would like to actually set up a list of all the possible department names as a drop down list here. We can generate all the possible values by just extracting the values with the unique function. So we'll say unique of my staff table department column and then it will give you all the values. If you want to be a little bit more friendly, you can also sort this. 
and we will get the sorted values right now we only have three departments but in future when the data changes it could actually be four or five departments and now i can kind of take these three values attached to my data validation here through a list validation you might be tempted to create the data validation linked to the range r5 to r7 and that would be wrong simply because the number of departments and the names can all change in future so a better approach is to use the spill range option from r5 and attach it to the data validation so we can go to the formula ribbon define a name this name will be let's just say dept dot names and it is beginning from r5 the end point is not known whatever is the result of the unique and sort formulas that's what we want so we'll say data r5 hash so we are creating a named range that points to the spill range and depending on the size of the spill range it will automatically grow or shrink once this is done we can come here select this cell go to the data ribbon and click on data validation where it says allow any value we will say the value should be limited to list and this list is equal to dept dot names and now we will have a list of all our departments here nicely sorted in the alphabetical order and i can just pick one of them the beauty of this is if i choose to rename or add a new department everything will be still dynamic so let's just say instead of engineering we move these three people to product development so we are adding a new department and introduce that the department goes and sits here it will now appear as an option for me in the data validation through which i can pick that and i can see those people so that's the number one trick with spill operator you can create a named range that is also attached to the spill operator and then reuse that in data validation or when making charts or something else for that matter the second technique with the spill operator is how do we perform some analysis on the spill ranges when the data that you want is in multiple columns so for example here my staff count is really three but my spill range which is beginning in c12 is actually three rows and four columns so if i simply use for example a function like count all and then just say spill range beginning in c12 i'll get 12 values because there's literally 12 values but we don't want 12 we want just three one option is instead of using count you could use a function like rows which just counts how many rows are there so c12 hash and that will tell you we have three people but how do we do the average we can't just say average and then just select all of this it might actually work in this case simply because average ignores any text values but if you are in your spill range if you have any other numbers then this value will be clearly wrong so how to calculate the average in this case the average should be literally on the second column of the spill range if you try to say average of and then pick these values you will not be able to access the spill range even when you use the spill operator d12 hash it won't work it will give a ref error this is because the spill range is technically not on d12 it is on the c12 so any formula that you write must start from c12 hash and then figure out how to get the second column values so here is how you can do that we'll just say average and then use another function to extract the second column that function is index so when working with the spill ranges using index becomes really important index allows us to access a part of the spill range a specific column a row or multiple values well so we'll say c12 hash and what index will do is it will read this entire spill range and then the row number that we want is we want all rows so we will ignore the row part and we want just the second column so this is the syntax and you will get the average as 64184 notice that if i just select these three values my average does show up as 64185 let's just change this to engineering and again i'll get a correct average I hope this has given you some clarity on how to work with the spill ranges and the new spill operator hash within Excel. 
If you have any more questions about this, please feel free to post them in the comment section so that I can help you. I have attached a sample file for you to play with. The link for that can be found in the video description below. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the filter function, here is a video that explains that. I'll catch you there. Bye-bye.